Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here, and today we're starting a new series focused on Electron JS development. So, for those of you who don't necessarily know what Electron is or want to learn more, this first episode is for you, and the next episode we'll actually get started with coding our app. So yeah, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to point out is what is Electron? And one of the common things you'll hear is Electron is a way to build desktop applications with web technologies. So what does that mean? Well, it means we can use our popular languages like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to make native interactive desktop applications. So what does that actually mean? Well, what happens when you install an Electron application is it bundles Chromium, which is basically the way Google Chrome, you can think of a Chromium rendering engine, it bundles that alongside a runtime of Node.js. And what I mean by runtime is just an interpreter to run our Node code on a user's machine. Because me and you may have Node installed on our machine, but maybe some other user, like my grandma, she won't have Node on her machine. So it comes with that runtime. Um, basically what this means though, is we have a runtime which has access to Node st specific stuff, AKA the file system, um, there's some built-in APIs that allow us to access operating system specific features like dialog boxes, um, stuff like that. And then we have Chromium, which is basically just a Chrome browser stripped of all of the Google um, stuff and just left with the basics for rendering and displaying HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So the way Electron handles this model is a two process model. The main process, aka the entry process, is basically where we handle our event lifecycle. And what this means is, say the user clicks a minimize button, or the user shuts their laptop lid, which means the computer's now in like a sleep mode. The main process is where we have access to all of these information and we can respond to these events as they occur. It's also where we can create secondary or tertiary processes, which will be renderer processes. And what these processes are, are just as they sound. They're the visual front end of our application. So the way you can think of a renderer process is it is a Chrome browser window. We can put HTML files in there, as well as CSS, image, and other JavaScript and stuff content. And what'll happen is it'll render it and show it into this little browser window. With that browser window, we can then communicate back and forth through bi-directional communication, or IPC, to our main process. So say we click a button in the renderer process, we can send a message to the main process that then, I don't know, gives off a notification, or um, creates a new file in the file system. A lot of things are possible, and this is what it allows us to do. Leverage the power of HTML, CSS in the browser, but also allow that to be used with really powerful lower level um, things, such as the file system and the operating system and all that. So the electron process model, another way can be looking like this, where we have a main process in the center over here. And inside that main process, we can then create separate renderer processes. We can have a renderer process that's right here, we can also have multiple render processes that are independent of each other. They can send messages back and forth. However, they cannot communicate directly to each other. Now, if you're like me, when you saw somebody giving a slide presentation on a technology, you're probably like, uh, okay, that doesn't make any sense. And don't worry, we'll get into that at the end of this video. The next series um, episode will actually get started and begin with some code. So, but before we get to that, I do want to go over some pros and cons of using Electron. One pro of using Electron is that we are using web technologies. And depending on who you ask, that can be a really big deal. Using web technologies means you're already familiar with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, all those things. And we can use them inside of our Electron applications. It also means the uh, learning curve for an application that's like this is a lot lower than if you had to learn C++ or C Sharp, C, Rust, any of those lower level languages. Um, it's very good for web developers because if you say are a React node developer, 
you can use those same technologies to build cross-platform applications for Windows, Linux, and OS X, just like that. Now, there are downsides with Electron, and some of these are big, some of these are a little overstated, and some of them are a little understated. The first one is performance considerations. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean the CPU and GPU usage of an Electron application, on average, will be higher than that of its C counterpart. What do I mean by that? Well, I have a system tracking information application that I personally built with Electron. It's idle CPU usage, that is when I am doing nothing inside of the application, is about 0.8% on my machine. I have a pretty beefy machine um, compared to most users of applications you'll be writing for. Uh, six cores, 12 threads, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a pretty good GPU. So it's not minimal. There is about a 0.8 to 1% CPU usage just for sitting there idle. And the reason this is, is because we have to bundle Chrome, a Chromium browser, and Node.js all running at the same time as our code. Um, this is a big deal for some and not a big deal for others. So it just depends on your personal use case. Next is RAM. Similar story, when we have to handle a Node.js runtime as well as our Chromium runtime, along with our code, there's going to be higher RAM usage. On average, it's about 65 megabytes by default with no other things happening. Um, those are the biggest deals. Those are all things we can handle and deal with. Um, at least for the most part, though they are some things to note. The more important things, in my opinion, are the bundle size and security vulnerabilities that Electron opens up. So the first one, bundle size. Um, since you are, again, installing on the user's machine, Node.js, Chromium, and all of the required bundles, um, the file size of your EXE that you're downloading will be no less than 65 megabytes. Um, it could go down in the future, but I really don't see that happening, and instead I see it going up. This is a big deal because if you have to install additional images, assets, code, all these files, the file size can pretty easily go above 100 megabytes. Um, secondly, the apps that Electron apps um, are made with are a lot easier to reverse engineer, and that means if you have proprietary code that you don't want people to see, it's going to be a lot harder to hide that. Again, reverse engineering exists for everything. Drivers are really good examples. They are the lowest level you can get, and yet they are re engi reverse engineerable given enough time. I'm just saying that Electron applications are a lot easier to reverse engineer. And lastly, kind of hammering in this big point, you have to install Chromium and Node to run an Electron application. What this means is if I tell my grandma to go to a website, download this application, and all that application does is display the time, it's still about a 70 megabyte download for her. Now, again, 70 megs in 2021 isn't the biggest of deals, but it is a bit of a turnoff when that same application, if it had been written in C, uh, would have probably been around two or three megabytes. So I just wanted to leave that out there. There are some big performance considerations, but for the most part, they can usually uh, be offset by just using a little bit of C code with your application. So pretty much that is that. Um, there are obviously big companies and good use cases for Electron. For example, popular apps like Visual Studio Code, Atom, Discord, Figma, Slack, Postman, and many, many more uh, use Electron under the hood. And these are some big companies, some big name players, and apps like uh, Figma, Slack, Discord, they generate a lot of money. And so there's definitely a use case for it. But there are obviously performance considerations and apps that really do need high performance like games, um, simulation stuff, anything like that, lower level stuff, Electron is not going to be your best bet. And at that point, you'd rather just write this in a lower level language like C. So without further ado, in the next episode, we're going to be getting started. All you'll need for the rest of these series is a text editor. I'll be using VS Code and Node.js um, version 6 plus. However, I'm going to recommend you have 10 plus installed. And uh, yeah, if you like this, I'll see you next time.